All right, last little bit of today's lesson is comparing the three different forms of a quadratic function. So if you're looking at the function at the right, let's just think about what we would see as the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is going to be where the parabola crosses the y-axis. Here's the y-axis, that vertical axis, and we can see that that happens at negative 5 here. So our y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 5. Now, um, remember that if we're talking about standard form of a quadratic function, we have a function in the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we know a few things from that form. Notice that we see this negative 5 that is here in our form. So this last value, that c value, is going to be our y-intercept, which makes sense because if you substitute a 0 in for all your x values, you're going to get that c value out. Then this negative part in front we know is going to reflect that parabola upside down, which means our, parab our parabola will open down, thus giving us a maximum. All right, so anytime we're in standard form, we can look at that last term, that constant term to know what our y-intercept is. So let's apply that here. f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. That means our y-intercept is going to be 0 comma negative 8. If we are looking at r of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 10, that means our y-intercept will be 0, 10. And last, can you do the last one? Take a second and see what you can do here. Hopefully you said that the y-intercept here will be 0, 7, um, always that constant value at the end of the function when we're in standard form. So that's the nice freebie that comes with standard form. Freebie here in standard form is our y-intercept. Don't have to do any work. It's just right there. All right. Next. Here's a different form. This is the one we just got done talking about. This is our intercept form. If we are in intercept form, um, we are able to see the values of the x-intercepts. Uh, for example, taking a look at the graph at the right, we can see that our x-intercepts are negative 1, 0 and 3, 0, which means our zeros are going to be negative 1 and 3. And we can see that they turn up in our equation. All right, so whatever we're subtracting is the 0, which we can then use to f as our x-intercept. All right, so... Uh, what are we subtracting in each case? If we're subtracting a negative 1, that means it's x plus 1. So negative 1 is a 0. And also here we're subtracting 3, so 3 is a 0. Now these notes use R and S. We're going to just change them to P and Q because p comma 0 and q comma 0 are the y-intercepts. I'm sorry, the, sorry, 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 the x-intercepts. And remember that the axis of symmetry is right in the middle of those zeros. And we can always find the x value 
by looking, by inspecting, but if it's not clear, we can average those intercepts, P plus Q, and divide that by two. All right, so taking a look, we have for that first function, our zeros are gonna be six comma zero and negative two comma zero. And our axis of symmetry, we're going to look smack dab right in the middle of that, but we can always just use this quick little calculation. Six plus negative two divided by two. It's gonna be four divided by two, also known as two. So our axis of symmetry would be x equals two. For the function below that, our zeros, uh, our x-intercepts are in the coordinates. Our zeros are actually just the values, so negative 7, comma, negative 1. And if I add those two things together, negative 7 plus negative 1, and divide that by 2, that's negative 8 divided by 2, or negative 4. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. All right, your turn to try. What are the zeros in that final function? And what is the axis of symmetry? Hopefully you said that these zeros are four and negative eight. And our axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals negative two. Fantastic. All right, the last form. Uh, we're going to talk about is going to be vertex form. Oh, let's go back here. The freebies. The freebies. What did we get for free here without doing any work? We got our x-intercepts. All right. And here, for the vertex form, the obvious freebie is going to be the vertex. All right, and we've done things like this before. If we look at the graph at the right, we could say that the uh, vertex is the coordinate 3, 1. And notice that that 3 value shows up inside the parentheses. And that 1 is going to be the y of the vertex. That coefficient out in front is going to tell us whether our graph opens up or down, meaning does it have a max or a min, right? If it's positive, it's a happy graph smiling at you, opening up, which means there's a minimum, okay? So if we're looking at the function a times x minus h squared plus k. That means the coordinate hk is the vertex. And the value of a determines if you have a max or a min, because it tells you if it opens up or down. So filling in this table at the right, we know that the vertex is going to be 5 comma 3. We know that the a value is positive, because it's a positive 1 right there. It means the uh, let's see, we'll just say a is 1. That means our parabola opens up, which means we have a minimum value. In that second function, our vertex is going to be negative 6, negative 4. The a value is 3, which is positive, which means we are opening up which also means we have a minimum. And the last one is set up for you, ready to go, give it a shot. Hopefully you said that the vertex is going to be 10, 0, or your a value is negative 4, we open down, and that gives us a maximum. All right, so let's take a look at these examples here and these 
cases, there are three different forms of the same function. If I were to take any one of these individually and graph them, we would see the exact same graph appear. It's just three different formats, which all of them have something to offer. Um, if we're looking at standard form of the equation, we get right away what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept here is going to be 0, negative 8. Oh, that's handy. Let's go ahead and put it on the graph. If I look at intercept form, intercept form is going to be um, handy for us because it's going to give us our x-intercepts. All right, so our x-intercepts are going to be negative 2 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. So let's go ahead and put those on the graph. And then lastly, the vertex is going to come straight from the vertex form. All right, and so we're going to go ahead and say that our vertex is going to be negative 3 comma 1. We're going to be right here. Now we know that uh, we have an axis of symmetry that goes right smack dab down through the vertex. And that axis of symmetry allows us to use symmetry to match that y-intercept point right here on the left-hand side. Since this is three units to the right, we can plot one three units to the left. And now we've got a nice five-point uh, curve to create our parabola with. We're going to do a little practice with end behavior. Our left-hand side is going to be as x approaches negative infinity. Our right-hand side is going to be as x approaches positive infinity. Now look at the graph. What is the graph doing on that left-hand side and the right-hand side? Both of those are going down. So we can say the y values are approaching negative infinity for both of these. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Our vertex can be found from vertex form. So negative 5, negative 4. Plot it, negative 5, negative 4, going to be somewhere like this. Our y-intercept is going to be found from standard form, which is going to be 0, 21. Go ahead and plot that. Oh, I didn't plot negative 5, negative 4, right? Let's go ahead and fix that. It should be down below. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, that's not going to turn out right. Negative 5, negative 4, right down here. All right, and then lastly, we can look at our intercepts. Going to be negative 7, comma, 0, and negative 3, comma, 0. And, and that's a, really a good example of, you know, when you're plotting something and something doesn't look quite right, you're going to re-examine and make sure that you didn't make an error somewhere. And we should end up with a U shape, right? And if we don't end up with a U shape, something's out of bounds. So we're going to re-inspect our work and see where we might have made an error. Use symmetry to find that last point of our five and go ahead and sketch the curve looking good all right our end behavior as x approaches negative infinity is the left side as x approaches positive infinity that's the right side what are my left side and my right side doing they're going up my y values are both approaching positive infinity. 
Outstanding. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing together and then we're gonna probably call it a good day. All right, this is a function it, written in three forms and they're the function that represents this situation. So let's read the situation. A medicine ball is thrown up into the air at the gym. The path of the medicine ball can be represented by the functions below. Let x represent time in seconds. So we'll call this the time in seconds axis. And let h represent the height of the ball in feet. So this is going to be the height in feet. Okay. So without graphing, answer parts a through c using the three forms of the quadratic function above. All right, so A, at what height was the medicine ball thrown from? Well, um, we want to think about where was the ball when time was zero, or what is the y-intercept? Now, if we look at the functions, which one gives us the y-intercept? Well, that would be standard form. And we could find our y-intercept by just looking at that last piece. So we can say the height would be 3 feet. What is the maximum height when the medicine, the medicine ball will reach? Hmm, the maximum is referring to either um, the, well, the maximum is referring to the highest point, which is the vertex. And we can get that information from the vertex form. Now, the maximum height is going to be the y value. See, the height is on the y-axis. So the y of the vertex is going to be 4. And so we can say that that's going to be 4 feet. And when will the medicine ball hit the ground? Well, that's going to be where it hits the x-axis. Okay. And so let's think about our x-intercepts. So we have an x-intercept of negative 1 and an x-intercept of positive 3. Now, if we're thinking about x being our time in seconds, which one of those makes sense? Negative 1 seconds or positive 3 seconds? And that will be 3 seconds. And with these... Uh, key features, we can go ahead and plot our x-intercepts, our y-intercept, our vertex. Let's go ahead and put the axis of symmetry so we can get that fifth point. And we have a graph. And here's a good place for us to end. I hope this helps and I will see you tomorrow.